Well, hello everyone and welcome to our channel. If you are a new subscriber, a special welcome to you. If you are not and you've been watching for a long time, make sure to give us a thumbs up. Tell other people about it if you enjoy this channel as we start a new garden at the cottage on the hill, Stuart. Mm -hmm. So you may notice that my big mound of plants behind me is getting smaller. More and more of these are moving to the front. And for those of you that were worried I may have way too many plants, never fear because <laughs> I promise you they are being rapidly eaten up by all of the real estate in the front yard. Some other things are going to be moving to the front too. Well, just a number of things. So Stuart, what do you say? Let's get started. Let's do it. The work continues. We took a momentary break to admire the white cat with the purple tail. And I think this at this point we need to insert that, Matt. We will show them. We got some footage of a cat with a purple tail with a matching purple collar. Um, it was quite something. So the work continues. The window box is going to go into place today. Now we're, they're cutting some braces for it right now, some lateral supports, which will help really fortify its rather formidable weight. We're going to put another coat of paint on the back side. Now, someone asked me, do I mind some of the little dings and things that are in the window box? Well, that's, that's the nature of the wood. This is rough cedar, and so it's got some imperfections, and that's perfectly fine with me. There's some additional trim work that will go on once it's in place, and then after that, I'm having some metal liners made that will be drilled so there will be uh, adequate drainage. But right now, we just want to make sure that it will stay in place. It's not going to be attached to the wall. It will be supported by this section of sidewalk and by some braces that they're going to be, that they're going to be installing. So what I want to get right now is just an idea of what it's going to look like and the visual weight and presence it will have on this side. Now, one of the reasons, in addition to its intrinsic charm, that I wanted to put a window box up in this location was is because you will notice that the window sill is not even. There's been settling. This is an old, old house. And once that's in place, all of the plants that are installed into the window box will camouflage all of that uneven, the uneven quality of that window. And it will also give me a little bit more privacy inside. I've got the, bla the uh, window blind now, just so you can kind of see what it, what it looks like. Now, great, great progress has been made. I've shown some little snippets of its installation, but finally, the, the porch and the walkway has dried and cured enough that we can start putting things back in place and I can start getting my mail again. <laughs> we can walk on it now. And this old aged brick so beautifully frames the walkway. You'll recall that I had this along my driveway at the fairy tale house and I love the way it looks and I love the way it really gives all of this presence and it accentuates the view from the sidewalk up to the porch, which will then be further enhanced by the pots, the thinials and things that we'll be putting, putting into place here pretty quickly. And I cannot wait for that because I will not only get an idea of what the, the porch will look like when it's pretty finished, but I will also have them gone from this area or the majority of them gone for this area so I can begin to envision what this space will look like. I have an idea that's starting to formulate in my head now with 
a key component, which is going to be some of the Miss Lemon abelias that we're going to plant later this afternoon. It's very muggy out here. It's going to get up into, what is it, you guys? Warm, up into yeah. the mid to high 80s, yeah. I think, today. AC came on in my house, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, pretty crazy. And I'm hoping we'll get some rain out of it, but it just sadly keeps seeming to miss us. But we're going to be doing all of that, and we're going to kind of finish some other projects that we've got going along this grid. And we'll be showing some of that. So right now, I've just got all of the puzzle pieces here for the most part, and it's time to start putting them into place. And I'm going to be doing some more container planting, lots of soil amendment, but I continue to be pretty pleased with the quality of the soil here. So my two men, uh, men right here at the tip of the spear, again, are Sergio and Javier, who are here helping make all of this magic happen. So that's our installment for now, and we'll come back a little bit later to see what else has taken place. I ordered the Birch Lux mattress and I put it on top of my box springs because I like a bed that sits kind of high. And then I also got the topper for it that makes it that much softer and gives us that much more of a cushiony feel to get a good night's rest. Birch mattresses are not only non-toxic, but they're made right here in America and are crafted with organic and natural materials. So with every Birch mattress, you get a 100 night sleep trial and a 25 year warranty. I love my Birch mattress and I think you will too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Birch. You can click the link below or go to birchliving.com slash vodder and get 20% off your mattress and two free pillows. And if you're looking for a mattress for your little ones, also check out the new Birch kids line. So I've got the large pieces of flagstone in place. This segment of video I want to do for you so you can kind of see a before and an after. We've positioned the beautiful flagstone that will come back around and will meet up. I've described this many times before, but we'll come back and meet up with the walkway. And this may be one of my favorite things is when I see a plant that's going to have its perfect application. And I, I immediately saw, once these flagstones were in place, how beautiful Ooh. this Miss Lemon Abelia is going to look, being very flouncy and feminine along the side of the walkway without being prickly and without in any way impeding passage. So this will be beautiful. The other reason that I love it from a design standpoint is because it's it's variegated and it's light and it's lemony. <laughs> and because of that, it will kind of illuminate this corner that might be a little, that you know could trend a little bit dark because of what's going on here. So I love that. It will also inspire some secondary things and some seasonal color that I'll wanna have around in here, particularly in the spring. So Stuart, if you could very carefully turn around at your feet, are some sweet, sweet daffodils. I almost lost it, there we go. And these daffodils <laughs> were planted by the previous owner, but I think probably what I will do as we're planting this area is reposition some of these little darlings. I've also got some in the back and plant them along this, along this walkway, which I think will be very dear with the Miss Lemon Abelia. And obviously we're gonna have to improve the soil. Now for right now, Yesterday, I kind of made, it was a decision-making process of which of these plants are gonna stay. In other words, which of these large boxwood topiary are gonna stay in this vicinity? And I pretty much decided that I just loved when I was walking from the south to the north towards the cottage on the hill, I just loved the, the way these statuesque topiaries looked right here in this corner. So they will stay here and I might also elevate this urn. I think the urn is gonna stay here too. And I love the way the pattern of this obelisk here 
egg of this egg shaped trellis matches the window grid so i love that so i'm thinking through that i i i think i've got a thematic for this corner now i've got a vibe going and once i get in my head kind of a design uh, a design theme then that's for me where the fun part begins. Then I'm just playing over here. I'm not really <laughs> designing anymore. I'm just playing and as a gardener, I'm having fun. Just a kid in a sandbox. Just a kid in a sandbox, Stuart. The other thing that I decided when I look from a vantage point rather far away is how much I just love being able to see the brickwork without much foundation planting around the base. So at the base of this semicircular area of the pool, Porch, I just love the way the brickwork looks with some of the bricks on the vertical and some on the horizontal. I love the way that looks and I don't want to camouflage that too much. So that's my thinking about all of this going on in this corner, but I wanted to talk about it a little bit in a before state so that you can really appreciate the changes that are made when it's in its after state not too long from now. And right now, Stuart, I am itching to get these finials back where they belong on the corner of the porch. So that may be the very next thing that we need to do. So do you have, can you guys see my vision here? I think they can, and we're gonna give them some wide shots and stuff. We'll give so. you some wide shots, take some before and after so you can kind of really see what I think is happening in this little corner of the cottage. It was a last minute decision at the old house to take these finials, these artichoke finials or pine cone finials or uh, pineapple finials, whatever they are. It was a last minute decision to take them from the other house and I am so glad I did. Me too. Because I think, first of all, Stuart and I like their familiarity, but I also love the fact that these are the perfect punctuation points for the cottage. And they also are doing something that I've realized I've wanted to do over time as the design evolves. And that is touches of grandeur that are still humble enough to match the stature of the cottage. So for example, the brick walkway down to the urns is both rustic and old and it's aged brick, but it, it lends a degree of formality and grandeur that I think is not so over the top and overstated that it really is uh, too much for the humility and the humble quality of a cottage. So I like that tension between kind of grand gestures that have been toned down to meet the personality of the cottage. Well, I think the trick to starting a garden from scratch is thinking two steps ahead of what is currently being done. So while they are planting things, I am already anxious to get out onto that social patio and drink my coffee and have a glass of wine. So I'm thinking about staging it. Now you guys know that whenever possible, I like to reuse and repurpose things that I already have. This is a metal stand for a table that in its past life was of course used as a table, but those of you who have watched for a while might remember that I turned it upside down. Do you remember this, Stuart? I do, yeah. And I put <laughs> a concrete bird bath in it, and then the bottom was completely covered by plants growing around it. But now I think I'm going to take it back to its origins. I may or may not paint it because I'm kind of liking the rustic look of this gray and then what I think I'm going to do is order a tabletop. I've been measuring it and it is 31, 32 inches so it might be that I can find a 36 inch outdoor tabletop that will fit it exactly. When I get to the front I'm going to see if this is the right circumference of a table that I want or if I want something a little bit lower. This one is 28 inches high so we're we're going to check that out. The other thing that a little bit later we'll be moving to the front yard and boy am I glad I did this. Late in the planting season for tulips, I found two bags of tulips I had not yet planted. 
and I don't think I planted these until the end of December or in January, and I just planted them in these huge pots. Well, now some of these are going to move to the front, and even though I despaired that I wasn't going to have any tulips at Easter time, I think indeed I will have a few anyway. Very nice. Here. And then the other thing that's going to move to the front some of you may recognize this concrete Easter basket. Do you recognize I that, Stuart? Do, yep. Okay. I've that been is, watching this whole time. And that, <laughs> that is very, very heavy, and it's going to move to the front in time for Easter. I'm not sure exactly where it will be placed, and then I've got some more tulips in there. So I'm starting to think about these other things that will be staged in the front. I just realized something. What's that? There's probably a large chunk of viewers who have no idea how much of a tulip lady you actually are. Oh, that's right. I am, I am, I am a, a I mean, you might have been known as the tulip lady for a gardener. while. And normally right now, I'd have about a thousand tulips yeah. blooming in my front yard. But uh, this is equally as fun. Getting started absolutely. and trying some new things has been just absolutely a kick for me. I'll just have to put up some pictures maybe so people can see. Yes. And, and remember, once the front gets finished, and I would say we're about two weeks from the front. Wow. Being almost completely finished in the side. Then we start on the backyard, and we're going to start out by doing these these steps here, which are just pretty much pretty atrocious. Okay, so Stuart, let's go to the front. And we are going to do something kind of fun here with that gate, but that remains to be seen. So I needed some kind of gardening interest on the east side Stuart be very, be careful, very careful on that hill <laughs> on the east side and flanking the big chimney so I had two of these extra pots and I think these will be brilliant here they're large enough so even though I'll have to water them by hand I'm not going to have to water them that frequently I have yet to decide what's going to go in them but I think they look great here and it gives me the opportunity, here's a great tip. It gives me the opportunity to have green things in an area that I cannot plant because I would love to have two statuesque hollies or something here, but obviously I can't plant through concrete. That leads me to my question of the day. What is the most innovative way that you have used a planter in the context of your garden? Someplace where it solved a gardening problem for you, a really massive container solved some kind of gardening issue that you were struggling with. So this area, Obviously, all of these, I say obviously, but if you're new to this channel, maybe you don't know, these square 12 by 12 pavers are all coming out. And this walkway, and you can see we've already removed a number of them, Stuart. This walkway is going to be graded so that it's flat, not quite so treacherous to walk upon. And then we're gonna put in flagstones that match the patio area because I love the way that will make it harmonious and continuous throughout the space from the patio all the way to the backyard. So this is kind of what, what we're working on right now. And because these had great potential, these 12 by 12 pavers, you can see that I've already removed a number of them and I'm repurposing them in an innovative way, I think, in the front. And I'm going to show you, show you that. Stuart, say hello to the Chinese We got to stop by here for burning. a second. It's Learning already its looking pretty. Off just in time for Easter. Pretty soon I will start pruning that up as I did the one at, at my old house. Now, in addition to, you know, the fun parts of landscaping and the fun parts of gardening, is the stuff that's not so fun, but very, very important. And because I don't have gutters, and so many of you have asked, gutters are just difficult on this kind of roof line. I'm still working through all of that, talking to specialists, talking to experts who can help me mitigate some of the problems of this kind of roof line. One of the problems being that when it rains really, really hard, water just kind of comes down in sheets right here. And then it obviously goes into the drain. So what we're going to do is kind of make a dry riverbed back in here. 
these are some, this is some gravel that is being repurposed. It was removed from another job that Kayla had. A little bigger than your standard. A little gravel. bigger, and it's going to be gifted to me. <laughs> and then probably these, at least this one, arborvitas will be removed. And I'm going to plant all of my hydrangeas, white weddings, and oncorazellias and things like that on in this area, which will be extremely well amended with compost and different kinds of soil additives and then of course this is the area that I said we're going to level off a little bit with some metal edging and some additional dirt. Safe. Stuart it's a good thing that you're a tennis player and you are so agile on your feet because <laughs> it makes me nervous when you walk backwards <laughs> on that incline. Well you're, um, you're talking about fixing it for me so we're good to go. If I didn't already show you, I added two Oakland hollies right here. I'm still waiting for the ginkgos that will be down here on the street. And they're going to be good for this narrow area in between the sidewalk and the street. So I'm a ginkgo here. <laughs> I'm a ginkgo here. Sometimes I'm a red bud steward. But today, I know, we've done this. Today I am ginkgos. That was good. And then I have yet to get a climbing rose that will climb up and over this, and I'll have to provide some kind of support here. A number of you recommended that I take off this screen door here since it's kind of a door to nowhere, and I probably will do that. Um, I haven't gotten into a lot of the design details on this side yet. One very crucial thing and another practical matter that I took care of was there was no water over here. So I did have a pump installed so I can add a hose to it, water things on this side without having to drag a hose all the way across the walkway in the front or all the way from the back. This will give me easy access to container plantings that I will probably stage around here and also and very obviously um, when plants first get established they need additional watering so I will be taking care of that too. These pavers have yet to be installed and this will sweep all the way around to the back. Watch your foot there, Stuart. <laughs> all the way to the back and, and then, it, as I said, it'll be harmonious. This same type of flagstone will go all the way to the back, connecting to what we have dubbed, and I loved it, I think somebody gave it, one of our followers gave it this moniker, Stuart, and I just really loved it. And so that wait, is the name of this has been picked by a follower? By a follower. The social patio is oh, what they called it. Oh, that's pretty cool. And How special so, that is. I know. It, I loved it. Whoever came up with that, they call them. A, they said, you call them a social patio? I can't remember if it was somebody from the South or, or from Great Britain, but nevertheless, I appreciate that because I have referred to it as that ever since. So the table that I was looking at was about, what did I say, it was about 31, 32 inches. I think so. So I could easily move these chairs back a little bit and that way it would not only be good for drinks, but would, it would also be good for dining if we decided to just have breakfast out here or something. But again, it may be a little taller than I want. I think, what did I say, it was 28 inches? Again, I think so. Yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm still kind of thinking through that. I'll probably just try it out because whenever possible, I want to reuse what I already have, like these chairs, which are probably 30 years old, I think. And they're also the reason that I decided to move them up front because they're very, very heavy and they rock and I'll probably get cushions for them. That may, that will probably match in some way or at least coordinate with a very small, or a small umbrella that I will have here that yes, I will take down when it gets windy. Now, my next thing I'm so excited about, look at this window box, Stuart. I was about to say, have they seen that yet? I, I well, I think they have well, seen the place, color I of guess. it. Yeah. And just so you guys can get an idea of how massive this is, it is 
117 inches long. Now, fortunately, we have taken measures and Kayla, who built this for me, has built, I don't know how many window boxes for me and some of the, some of the clients that I work with. She really knows how to make them very structurally sound. I was about to say, it looks that way. Yeah, formidable. This ain't going anywhere, and there are still some more brackets and pieces that will be put into place a little bit later. Now, if you look, it's very deep, which, will, which is good because that means that I can plant small shrubs and things in here, probably boxwood, maybe some of that ivory mist euonymus from Southern Living, I'm not sure but I can put greenery in here. So this will really be a small landscape in and of itself. I'm so pleased with the color that I went back and forth and you guys had strong opinions on that. And I understood from a design aspect, both solutions. One of the deciding factors was this is already gonna be a very hot, very exposed location and I didn't want to add to that heat in any way by painting it black and I also like the way it just seems to be a little bit more seamless and doesn't stop the eye sometimes I go for high contrast but quite often I go for something that is just very very subtly the same throughout the space and that's why I decided to go with this gray and I really love it now on top in addition to this and the depth. Did we show them the depth? We did. Well, okay. Yeah. So in addition to it's being rough cedar, which is rot resistant, and some of you commented, did it bother me that there were imperfections and, and blemishes in it? Well, no, that's the nature of rough cedar. And I, I actually kind of like it and it does smell good. Once the liner is in place, and by liner, I mean a metal liner will sit inside here and it will be drilled for really good drainage, but that way it will prevent the rough cedar out, um, uh, outer box from rotting out prematurely and I can water it to my heart's content. And because of its depth, again, I can put some things in here that will be pretty large scale. And I think it'll be a wonderful showcase for not only evergreen shrubs, but also for all of the spillers and the seasonal color that I anticipate cascading out over the edge. And I think it will be wonderful. Now, someone asked me, why didn't they do it in two different components and break it up one section here and another section here? Well, that's because then if I want some symmetry and I want to plant an evergreen, 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 I can do that now. If I had two separate ones, this is the point where they would meet and I wouldn't be able to plant in there. So this will enable me to have three equidistant plants positioned in here. So that's, that's why we did it this way. Um, once the metal liner is in place, we'll put a cap on it that will frame this out. So there will be a horizontal cap on this and it will look very, very finished and I think very exceptional from the street. Now these are, are not inexpensive to make and I acknowledge that, but by the same token, this has the size, the mass, and the visual prominence of a piece of furniture that you would spend a lot of money on. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, and, and this is less expensive than a very fine piece of furniture. furniture, and it makes a statement, especially in a small garden. So if you're in a courtyard garden or you are in a very, very small garden and you've got lots of concrete or whatever and you can't plant, this is another way as a solution when a container type garden can solve a gardening problem. An area where you would like to have greenery and flowers, but you can't because of some kind of impediment. So I think this is gonna be absolutely brilliant. And then under here, we will put more gravel that matches the gravel that will be the mulch in the garden beds in front. And this will just absolutely just fade away and be so profuse with, with different 
flowers and plantings, I think it will be wonderful. And then probably I'll do the, you know, the fun stuff of staging, maybe some lanterns and things like that out here. So I really, I really like that. Notice the layering here as I deadhead my pansies. Notice the layering that there are things at various levels. So, so you can kind of see. So this is, I, you may not remember, Stuart, there that we, we did a video on this. This used to be planted in the corner at the old house in the northwest corner. And I pruned it up to almost have a bonsai kind of quality to it. This was just a round boxwood mm -hmm. that had gotten overgrown. I put it in a pot and it looks spectacular in this very, very large pot where it's been happy. It grounds the corner. These are all great garden design tips, I think, Stuart. <laughs> and this grounds, it grounds this corner. And again, it creates that layering where it goes high, low, high, low, and then over here, to this kind of little village of boxwood. I need to prune these, but this little village of boxwood, they're almost like boxwood balls that seem to be spilling down the hill and eventually then will spill out into the garden. I so, like it. Yeah, this is kind of garden design storytelling, which I, which I do love. And then since I've got a vertical punctuation point right here, I can have something low in here and I am envisioning, stand right there, Stuart. Let me get your opinion on something. Am I looking back your way? Where am I looking? All right, we're turning everybody. <laughs> that I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is just fill this corner with this gorgeous lemon lime Nandina. Now I've got right here, this is Little Bonnie Dwarf Spirea, which will bloom in pink. And it's going, the, those pink blooms are going to surround, you can see here I've got them placed, they're going to completely surround this patio. <clears throat> Since these better boxwood were smaller than what I had hoped, and by the way, they're small because this is a brand new line. They're just now starting to grow these. These are those wonderful blight resistant plants. And so instead of doing a hedge, I'm going to do kind of what I think of as a globular hedge. So I will have mounds of boxwood, and then I'm gonna have mounds of this pink spirea. Then I'm gonna have another mound of boxwood, and I'll continue that pattern surrounding the patio. And these over time will get to be about three feet. This is Renaissance. They'll get to be about three feet. And then I'll keep this pruned low and blooming pink. And I think it will be absolutely gorgeous. And then this will bloom in pink. And then before Stuart, I was a ginkgo. <laughs> now I am an Ann Magnolia. Boom. So the, the pink Ann Magnolia that is right behind you, that's been blooming, is gonna be right here. And over time, it's gonna get larger. And I'm gonna show you an example in a future video of one that I saw on one of my walks. And I'm gonna be doing that, Stuart, in the neighborhood. I'm gonna show you some favorite things as I walk the neighborhood. Walk with Linda. But yes, but there's going, <laughs> walk with Linda. So there's gonna be an, an a, um, that small magnolia here, which will be absolutely beautiful when it's blooming in the spring and it perfectly matches the hue of the blooming red buds. And it's right behind you, Stuart. There's still a few blooms on it in front of the yellow tulips, which are just some more tulips that I just kind of stuck in there. Just some tulips. Just some tulips. So I think this is gonna be very, very fun. Now, what I have found in my theory of garden design, which isn't like everyone's, some people have said, well, how did you know where all of these plants were gonna go before you'd even you know, come up with your design? It wasn't so much that I knew exactly where they were going to go, but I knew that I wanted drifts of certain plants. Like I wanted a drift of really tough plants like 
the orange rocket barberry and the kaleidoscope abelia and I wanted drifts of those in an area that was going to get lots of sun exposure. So I'll talk about that a little bit later. And likewise, in my mind, though I wasn't exactly sure where it would be, I knew I wanted to have a huge drift of pink. So this spirea, when it's in bloom, will bloom in pink, and when it's not in bloom, it will be a really good, tough plant, evergreen, and a nice textural contrast, because this has a matte leaf, and that matte leaf will look pretty against, sorry, Stuart, right, I'm sorry, yeah, um, against the glossy quality of the boxwood. Absolutely. So I... They'll they, stay in your hand, didn't blow away. It did, didn't blow away. Yeah. <laughs> Today we don't have constant wind, we have gusts of wind, yep. which is very typical for spring. Um, we planted the last of these Yopon hollies. You can see there's lots of twigginess in this one still. I've already worked on this one a little bit. And I think in our next Wednesday working walkabout, Stuart, I'm going to show how I trimmed up some of these. I like those. Because I want them to be light and airy. I love the way there is a lot of open and negative space between these different trunks. And over here, I'm going to start encouraging this one and the other one to do the same. So I might put a stake or a spacer in between here to encourage it to grow. I limbed up some trees in my backyard because of you, and it just changes the way they feel. Really? Right so now. how did it change? Well, I mean, I, I mean, just being able to kind of see through and the, the bottom yeah. not looking so messy is just, it just really makes it look okay, like a, a really Okay, that's the reason thing. to do it is it, yeah. it, is it takes away some of the messiness. See all of this in here. It cleans it out, takes away some of the messiness, gives it um, more of an artistic look. More of kinda. an art, yeah. yeah. And kind of more and tailored. natural earth and tailored art. <laughs> but the other thing is, is it creates a sense of mystery because you can then look through it into what's beyond. <laughs> so it's creating some kind of transparency. It becomes Artistic. a window is what it does. It does. Kind of. It does. I like all these analogies. Yes. <laughs> yes. With a curtain. So this is, course, this is the curtain. And of course, I love the, the red berries in the winter time. So that was probably my biggest design change, Stuart, was instead of, <clears throat> and this is where you just adapt to what you've got. I've often told people the exact placing of a plant is going to depend on the size and the scale and the maturity of the plant itself, and that's very true here. So, along the brick walk, which I have to say, Thanks to Javier, looks absolutely fabulous. <laughs> Everyone is so jealous uh, that I have you guys to help me. They, they just wish that I, they had such competent craftsmen and artisans to help them with their garden. So I, I don't take you for granted, do I? So you'll notice that Javier, since he's laid the brick path so wonderfully, now he's putting in a blend of infill that is exactly the same. Can I steal this for a minute? Yep. Mm -hmm. That is exactly the same as what we used on the patio. And the reason we're doing it this way is because it's not just gravel, but it's also a little bit of dirt. So then some things that self-seed, even though they would self-seed in the gravel, this will help them germinate a little bit faster, I think. And if I want to have things like golden fever view or different herbs and things, and I want them to germinate in between the stone and the flagstone, then that will facilitate that. Meanwhile, Sergio, well, you know what, Stuart? Hmm. I'm gonna have to take a break for a minute. Okay. I'm gonna get a sip of water and we'll be right back. That sounds good. So while Javier continues with the brickwork, which is just about finished, isn't it, Javier? Yeah. We're just about finished. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sergio is doing lots of planting. So we're digging big holes, 
creating more boxwood mounds, boxwood villages in the corner and equidistant up and down the brick line. And he's adding wonderful amendment that has both compost and, and rich mix in it. Now, some of you have, have commented, well, it must be nice to have somebody do all this work for you. <laughs> well, it, remember, I left a completed garden that I completely did myself um, over 30 years and am starting from scratch. And I'm 30 years older than I was <laughs> when I started that last one. So, so that other one has helped pay for this one. There you go. And I, these guys can do this work so much faster than I can. Now, once it gets to the point where I'm planting the, you know, the fun stuff, then I'll help with the planting. I have over here, Stuart, along what I'm going to call the abelia walkway, I am planting, I found some more bulbs. It's not too late to plant some alliums and I'm starting to plant some alliums, some gladiator alliums from color blends and some from Brex also in between the branches of the abelia. So that way when they come up and they finish blooming, the foliage can die down underneath the canopy of the Miss Lemon abelia. And it's gonna be just so pretty and romantic along there. And then these topiaries are gonna stay in place. And I think, here's another question of the day. Is it starting to look like me? It is. <laughs> is it starting to look I'll like Linda Vodder? It definitely is. Uh, with some of my signature touches. I love the way the porch came into place with the topiaries on it. Some of you have questioned, well, am I worried about the concrete getting dirty and the pots getting dirty? Not so much. That's, you that's know, the way it goes. that's the way it goes. If you're a gardener and you, and you want to live this life. Um, <laughs> Good. Well said. Well, uh, yeah, what else can I say? <laughs> um, over here on this side, we finished this yesterday this brick run of pavers and brick. And now we've just finished it on this side. So on the upper terrace on the hill, this grid is just about complete. All right, and then pause there. I'm gonna come behind you. Stay right where you are. Okay, do you want to turn? Uh, no, turn. You're, yeah, you can turn around if you want and say this grid is just complete okay. and go for it. So on the upper terrace, this grid is just about complete and it's been circumscribed by the brickwork and the pavers and I love the contrast between the pavers and the brickwork and that was inspired. I wanted to have these urns here and I wanted to create a plinth or a pedestal for them so they'd be a little bit more prominent and I didn't want to have to get HP approval to concrete anything in. So this brick is just soft set here with these pavers on top and they are the perfect, the perfect framing and support for the urns. So there'll be a set of two urns here that used to be along my patio in the front, Stuart, remember? I do. Or not patio, porch in the front, the winding wall. And I've got two more down here that ideally in my head would already be planted with the same things that those are planted with. And then there would be this run of yellow that would go all the way up to the top. So again, your eye travels and I am intentionally making it travel from one place to another. Down here, because I think I've told you I'm not gonna have any grass, down here, we're still going to take out this grass, amend this soil, the slope will remain, and I'm seeing masses of drift roses and butterf those can butterfly candy bushes and some other things that will cascade down this hill. And then flanking each side of the walkway, will be mounds of boxwood that will be a little bit bigger than the tiny boxwood villages I have up here.
so this will be a little bit more prominent and then I'll probably come down here with two massive boxwoods to punctuate this corner. So hopefully, I've talked about some of this before, but this will help explain the totality of my vision and kind of what I saw when I bought, uh, bought the cottage on the hill. Stuart, let's go inside for a minute to celebrate some Easter stuff. Mm. And then you guys need to go out and get in your garden. Well, we were planting fiends yesterday and we got a ton of stuff in the ground, including some really important boxwood balls that I'd moved from the other house. And we put them on the corner here between the brick run and the steps. And I think they're really important to establish some visual weight right here. And then I went out yesterday and I found some more yellow pansies so that that whole color moves up from the bottom of the stairs all the way up to the top. So you can see that a lot of stuff is, is beginning at least you will see where it's going to be positioned. It's not mature yet. It needs to grow into place so it doesn't look too, um, too kind of cluttered and itty bitty. But Stuart, can you kind of see from that oh, vantage yeah, they're, they're point? They're getting a wide look at it. Obviously, we've done a lot more work on the east side than on the west side because we've got to finish up some sprinkler work over here. And that's because this time of year, sprinkler guys are really in demand. And so I get them when I can get them. And I just try to be patient in the meantime. And as some of you suggested, yes, we do have plywood that goes over that when we're working in the area. But I want to show how these drifts are starting to take shape. So there, there are kind of intermingled drifts over here that have the orange rocket barberry and the kaleidoscope abelia and some sunshine ligustrum, some fire chief arborvita. And then I went to Lowe's yesterday and I got some beautiful salvia here. And I think that will look gorgeous when it all grows together and it's in one great big blue sweep. You can see how pretty it looks, mm -hmm. the wind blowing through through those little purple spires. And then behind that, still to be planted, will be a huge drift. I mean, this is gonna be pollinator heaven through here, is gonna be a huge drift of these crazy pink echinacea, AKA coneflower. So that will be beautiful. And then once this stuff gets in place um, and it gets mulched, then I'm gonna seed some things. My friend Gail Wynn up in Enid gave me some Cleome seeds. Well, she just gave me a whole bunch of seeds and I'm gonna be scattering them in very specific areas. We replanted or transplanted rather the magnolia. I think oh, I cool. had talked about it before, yeah, but did. it wasn't in place and it is now and I cannot wait for it to grow up and become a small tree. Look at that. And then these, these are those pockets, little villages of better boxwood and the spirea. Now, once we get some rain and temperatures are consistently warm, this stuff is all gonna grow very, very quickly, or at least the spirea will. And I will have something of a hedge here before you know it. So it's not as mature as I would like, but that's okay. You have to be a little bit patient, don't you, Stuart? Patience is key. Patience is a virtue. And then, this, this, every time I'm doing a design, there's one part that really surprises me in such a fun way. And this walkway that will go around to the west side, this is wow. the one. It does look good. This is the one that is really surprising me. And I have dubbed it the Lemon Walk because it's all gonna be lemony plants. I've got this gorgeous lemon lime abelia, or Miss Lemon abelia, lemon lime nandina, ah. and this is all gonna be lemony plants growing through here. I've planted some purple gladiator allium that will come up through here. All right, and, where are we going here? I only showed you. Okay, keep going. Let's, hold on, no, let's tell them what this is again, since I'm just- Oh, oh I'm sorry, this is Miss Lemon abelia. Good job. And you can see, it is going to be in a rhythm and repetition 
across this walkway and then I anticipate some kind of minor bulbs will be planted here next year, maybe some ajuga in between the stepping stones and then in the back, very much in want of water right now, are some moonlight encore azaleas that will get about four to, feet, four to five feet high. So this whole area this time of year is going to be in lemon, yellow, and white, and I think will be very, very pretty. And then even though it's short term and they don't look exactly the way I want, nevertheless, I want to share my huge pots of tulips with people. These were ones that I potted up at the other house and brought over here. But those were fun to move. Yes, yes. The, oh yeah, the, these were <laughs> these were not fun to move. No, but the guys, they're so strong. And, um, and it's very helpful to have strong backs. So still waiting for the liner. I think I've already mentioned that. So Stuart, what do you think? I think we need to go inside. I think is it time to, to And to even Easter though, even though you guys will be watching this on Easter Sunday, it's not Easter yet today. And you can see how I've got my Easter table set. All right. There better be goodies in there. Okay, I'm gonna leave my pruners out here. Shall we go in? Mm -hmm. Well, welcome to my Easter table. As I said earlier, you'll be watching this on Easter, but for me, it is still two days before. And it's a very intimate setting just for hubs and myself, because later in the day, we're gonna be going to an Easter party within walking distance in the neighborhood of some friends who do a roasted lamb and have a big crowd. So that should be very, very fun. Here, I'm gonna be making baked eggs with spinach and a cream sauce and I'll also steam some asparagus. That's what's gonna be on the menu. In addition to this lemon roll cake, which I think looks scrumptious, I did not bake it because I still have to get my oven calibrated. Mm. Stuart, you might help me with that. I think so. But I think it looks very, very yellowy and sunshiny, which is basically the muse for my tablescape today. It's all about yellow. And I don't have a lot of Easter decorations that I put up over the, you know put in storage after Easter because they're all in pastel hues typically and that isn't the the color theme that I have going in my interior decor so I don't have a lot of it what I do have tends to just be white white china and I get out these wonderful candlesticks that are spring fresh veggies that not only work for Easter, but they work for spring in general and into summer. And I'm gonna show you a couple of hacks about this one vase, uh, vase arrangement that I've got right here, filled with clippings from the alley behind my house. That's pretty cool. So these are all clippings with the exception of the flowers. I've got just a couple of yellow tulips that you guys have seen in bloom in the pots outside my door. And going strong for, I think maybe it's been a month now, are some of these yellow and kind of rose-tipped dianthus that I pulled out of an arrangement that was finally past its prime, and I just kind of put those in there. I think they're very sweet, along with some cuttings, as I said, from, from the alley behind me. And also, the other day after our windstorm on one of my walks, I noticed that there were a lot of downed branches that had this kind of budding foliage off of it. So on my walk, I picked them up, brought them home and immediately put them in some water. And I'm gonna guess that even though I didn't bake it myself, Stuart is probably gonna want a piece yes. of this lemon roll. And I thought you were asking you were asking me to help with the oven earlier. I was talking about the cake. I you guess. were helping so, with the cake. Yeah. Well, you so can I'll, I'll tell both. you what, you help me with the oven and then you can help there me with go. the cake. That sounds like but I think it looks really sweet <laughs> on the green, this green glass. This is a green glass uh, cake plate that belonged to my second mom. I have it in this size and one that's a little bit larger. And I have just decorated the lemon roll with some fresh mint sprigs. It was a nice touch. That I also got on one of my walks because it was running rampant. It had jumped the bounds of someone's garden and was running rampant across kind of a parking lot area. So I clipped some of that to bring it home because sadly I don't have my own herbs yet. And then do you 
recognize this bottle, Stuart? I was going to ask. This, yes, this is one of those wine bottles that I got. I don't remember the name of the wine, but I got it at Trader Joe's. And I love the way it looks as a water bottle. I keep these in the refrigerator now. They always, I always then have access to cold water and I think it looks very elegant. Now someone, I can't remember who, but one of you made a great recommendation. And that was, why didn't I use a cork in here instead of this screw on? Even and on classier. A, yeah, be classier, except <laughs> that I didn't like the rim, the ridged oh. rim exposed. I can see that, I guess. And so. so in this case, if it didn't have that ridged rim, I probably would have used a cork, but I so appreciate the detail, the detailed thinking of whomever brought that to my attention. And please, in the comments below, let me know. So I think that's, I think that's really fun. I will bake my eggs in these little dishes that I got at a thrift store. More about thrifting later. And then also another tip from Trader Joe's. This wine, sparkling wine, Blanc du Blanc, was recommended to me. It was $6.99 a bottle and it was recommended to me by a new friend of mine who is a sommelier. And she said that this is really, really good and would be great to have on hand for the summer. And lots of my lady friends like to drink sparkling wine. Stuart knows that about oh, them, yep. don't you? Yep, yep. So so those, there's just a couple of tips. And then I have, oh, and by the way, these bunnies were thrifted. This sweet little bowl holding the jelly beans was thrifted. And then lastly, these wonderful placemats or linens. These were a gift to me by my daughter-in-law's father and his girlfriend, and I absolutely love them. And I'm just mortified thinking that I have not written her a thank you note for these. So if you are watching this, Veronica. Hey, there you go. Veronica, I absolutely love them. And I actually have been saving them for my Easter table. So I think it all came together really, really well. Now, speaking of thrifting, Let's get up. Oh, Stuart, my goodness. I, I, the, the most important oh, thing, wow. I didn't show my new table. Well, you did, but you, you didn't. But I, I did, but I didn't. <laughs> so this is my new dining room table from Lit Fad, and I've only got it set for two today, but it can seat six. I've got another chair that sits at the end, and I really love it. It is just perfect here, and I think it looks great with the blonde wood floors. And then probably my most favorite thing I have ever bought off of Amazon is this bench. It looks like it matches the table identically. It's got this kind of seagrass seat to it and there's cushion underneath it so it is eminently comfortable. I will put a link below, but I love the way it looks and I love its portability because I can move it into the living room if we have additional guests or into the parlor rather, if we have additional guests and I can move it out of the way if I want to do exercises or things right here, but I digress. Stuart, let's talk a little bit more about thrifting after we talk about this absolutely gorgeous flower arrangement. Now, you will notice that this has a number of fragrant oriental lilies in it and a couple of Asiatic lilies. These all came from Trader Joe's. This is just two bunches. And I would say in terms of value for your money, lilies are probably the best value for your cut flower money that you can spend. And then I just took some more tree trimmings that I found on my walk and also from the alley behind. And then when I would find some that still had seed pods on them and a little bit of coloration to them, I added those and some branches. And I think it just looks sweet, don't you, Stuart? Not very much, yes. Now this is in a thrift store find. I've had this for a very, very long time. It's just a glass vase. One of my very favorite things to buy when I go thrifting, and I got this at Goodwill, I don't know how long ago, but Stuart, recently I went to Goodwill and I was looking for something very specific. And that was, I am loving as a signature touch to my kitchen, 
always having a really massive arrangement on the corner of my island. Now, obviously it gets moved when we dine here, but I love the drama of it, which is another reason that the area alongside it is a no drop zone. So I like <laughs> for it to always be clean and clear, don't I, Stuart? Yes, you do. I'm a, uh, yes, I, I think am. I've done pretty good with this. You've done very good with this. But I'm <laughs> on the lookout now for really large containers that I can use on that corner. And voila, I went to Goodwill yesterday. And by the way, my Goodwill has had a huge makeover. It's now kind of a boutique Goodwill. And I noticed that even, even with that, the prices barely went up. So I found these really large glass containers. So I can see this filled with citrus fruit and greenery. Look at these, these are marvelous. This one had a tag on it when I got it that said Troctas. Troctas is a very, uh, very well-known florist here in Oklahoma City that has been here for years and years. This obviously was used for a flower arrangement that was very dramatic and massive. And then I love this. I like the smoky this. one, right? Yeah. Yes, and these were, this was $5.99 and these were $8.99. But this one, I can just see it at Christmas time, I think filled with greenery and red and then maybe used as a lantern. I was about and to say, you put some light in there. Yeah, really put a cool. pillar candle in there. Won't that be fabulous? Yeah. I love it. Now back to the table. So I got all of these at the thrift store. Now back to the table where I'm gonna show you how using a thrift store find like this, I got these at a thrift store. You can really transform any candlestick into a vase. So Stuart, let's go back to the table over here and you can see how I did just that with this asparagus oh, that makes sense now. candle holder. So in essence, while I won't take that one apart, I will take this one apart and all you do is just insert that into the candle holder. It could be a brass candle, brass candle holder. It could be crystal, whatever. And then you put your flowers in it. And it's especially, I think, beautiful if you get flowers that kind of cascade over the side. But I do like the way you can see some of the stems in there. Is that made for that? No. Well, this is, yes, I take that back. This that is made is for this is made for candles to put in different kinds of things because then you could put like a votive in here and you could set it into ah. your into I can't remember the a candle cup you could set it into any kind of candle holder but why not use it as a vase Why not it makes total Why not sense. Why not try <laughs> Why not try? So even though um, my tablescape is, is simple this year, we're not having a big crowd, Hubs will be thrilled that he gets a breakfast at all on Easter while he is awaiting the party later in the afternoon. But I think it all came together very inexpensively. A lot of thrift store finds, and of course, always adorned with beautiful things from the garden. Happy Easter, everyone.